Hey, what's up guys, it's Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday, but this episode's going to be a lot different than the normal top five videos. For this episode of the Modded Monday, I'm not actually able to cover five mods because I can't sign in to download any mods. It won't let me sign in at all to the modding server, I can edit my load order, but I can't download any new mods or anything along those lines, it just won't let me connect, it keeps telling me to log in, so while we're waiting for the Bethesda servers to come back up for us Xbox users, I figured I'd put out the poll for the new load order video and you guys seem to vote 31% for both the stealth load order and the tutorial load order which I thought was absolutely amazing and a thousand voters within a couple days was also amazing so thank you guys so much for participating in that that means the world to me that you guys actually vote for the future of this channel and what actually comes on to this channel so since there was a tie between the stealth load order and the tutorial load order I figured I'd make the tutorial and template load order for this video for today because I can't sign on to download any mods so this this will take place of our top five mods of the week and then next week we'll resume if the servers are back up hopefully they are fingers crossed but later down the line whenever i create a new load order featuring 150 new mods i'll make sure to make it towards a stealth load order because that's what you guys also voted for so setting up your own skyrim load order can be a very long tedious and difficult process but there are guidelines that you can follow and categories that you can organize them in that'll make it so it's a lot easier than normal and you aren't just throwing mods into random locations after 150 episodes of my top five mods of the week series that means that I've covered over 750 mods and out of all this time that I've spent modding I've created these categories that I fit these mods into that make it so the game won't crash as much it'll run a lot smoother you'll have better FPS and just you can fit your mods into these categories and your game will just run a lot smoother now then again there are mods out there that aren't compatible no matter what so it's great to read the description of the mods beforehand before placing it in your load order just so you know if there's gonna be any type of incompatibility or any issues with other mods. So for today, I've created a little bit of a template load order that you guys can follow if you'd like. It's based off of the previous load order videos that I've made, such as the turning Skyrim into a true RPG and turning into a mage load order, both of which will be linked in the description. If you're more interested in just following the list and have all the mods chosen for you, I'd recommend going and checking those videos out. This video is more for people who want to build a mod list themselves using mods that they've chosen instead of me. So I'm just going to try to help you guys out the best that I can by giving you the the categories that I use and the way that I organize my mods and the way that I actually build my load order videos. So when it comes to categorizing your mods and organizing them, I have them organized into 26 different categories, which sounds like a lot, but there's so many different objects and different types of mods in the game that you're gonna need 26 different categories. And I'm gonna go through each one, one by one. I'm not actually gonna go through each separate mod that I have in the template load order. If you do wanna know more information about the mods featured, you can check out my previous videos where I go more into detail about what these mods actually do. And the template load order itself features 100 mods, meaning you have 50 extra spaces if you even follow this list, but it covers all the different areas in the game without pushing your character in a certain direction. And it's also optional that you download and actually do the template load order. You actually don't have to do that at all. You could just follow the categories that I have that I'm going to talk about, and we can just go through there and you can just create your load order based off of the different categories that I have and the organization that I have. So like I said, I arrange my load orders using 26 different categories in order to keep them organized. And the first category is the master finals and patches. This is where mods like the unofficial Skyrim special edition patch will go. Other than the unofficial patch you also have like creation club patches will go up here and some mods whenever you download them if you didn't know it was a master file it'll just automatically warp to the top so you won't be able to actually lower it down on your list because it'll just warp right back up to the top. So some mods just need to do that and they just need to stay at the top. If that actually happens you can just leave it like that, leave it at the top and that should be good to go. Other than that the master files and patches is a pretty simple section I normally always just have the unofficial patch and that's really it but just in case you have other mods that have master files this is where they'll go the next section that we have is for fonts and menu mods and that's for items such as font overhauls main menu replacers load screen replacers and it's also important to note not to have two different font overhauls and not two main menu replacers and try not to do two load screen replacers if you have any I would only choose one of each of these mods if you're gonna do a main menu load screen and font overhaul next up we have the music and sound category which is where you'll put your music mods and then I have mods such as the realistic waterfall sounds quieter dungeons and caves but this is 
where you'll put mods that alter the sounds in the game, such as Sounds of Skyrim and other mods like that. Then we can move on to the user interface mods, which are very, very fragile if you have more than one. So I'd try to just only have one, and the one that I recommend is the Sky HUD Dissonance preset because it reminds me so much of Oblivion, and I just really like the way the Oblivion HUD looked, so if Oblivion isn't your style, you can download any type of user interface mod, but this is just my preference, and this is just where it would go in the list. After the user interface mods, we have the physics mods, which I have the realistic ragdolls in force, realistic impacts, realistic death physics, just anything that alters the physics and how the game actually works in that aspect, this is where those mods would go. After you have all your physics mods in place, we can move on to the armor and apparel section, which includes mods such as face masks of Skyrim, cloaks of Skyrim, I have practical armors, the authentic legion armor, the guard armor overhaul, just any type of armor or armor overhaul that you would want would go in this section here. Moving on to our next category, we have the magic and spells section, which features mods such as the cheat room, there's the apocalypse magic of Skyrim, which is like a huge overhaul to all the spells in the game. I also have the ordinator perks of Skyrim in here, and then there's a compatibility patch for ordinator and apocalypse, which I wanted to talk about here. If you ever are out and downloading mods of your own, and you notice that there's a patch out for the mod that you have, I would always look into getting it. Because if you have the two mods that are featured for the patch, then you're gonna wanna have them be compatible to Together because obviously there was a reason that patch was made, you know? So I would always download the patch and make sure it is placed after whatever mod you have. It'll also tell you in the description of the patch where to put it. And it's just to make two mods run together. And I know it's kind of vague to say it like this, but if you ever have a patch or a compatibility patch to download, always look into those because they will keep your game from crashing and make you have the most compatible list possible. But as we're talking about the magic and spells section, this is just the area that you'll put all of the spells that get added into the game, as well as all the different magic overhauls that you have. Just place them in this section here. The next section I have here is for beast and vampire mods. So I have growl and sacrosanct. You can have any other type of beast or vampire mod that you want here. It's just those are the two that I recommend and the two that I have the most experience with. So any type of beast or vampire overhaul, this is where they would go. After your beast and vampire mods are put in place, we can move on to the stat changes and game rules section. This is a place for mods such as enchantment overhauls, perk point mods, and stat changes, training adjustments, just any type of game rule as well, such as better pelt prices, the archery tweaks plus that I have featured here, and belt fastened quivers. These are mods that just are simple stat changes and game rule changes, which sound very vague. You know, whenever you say stat change and game rules, it sounds very vague, but there's just so many mods out there that fit into this category that it's just so hard to be specific. So just use your best judgment if it's a game game rule tweak, or if it's a stat change to your character, just try to fit it in this section here. Our next section is for camera mods, and that's for mods such as the dynamic camera, I also have the dynamic display settings, as well as the horse camera tweak. You can have any different type of camera mod here, just anything that alters your camera, the mod will go here. Now we can move on to our weapons section, which you can put any different type of weapon overhaul or weapon mod in this category, and it should work just fine. This is where I normally put all the weapons that I use, and I have items such as the Royal Armory and the Throwing Weapons Light on this template load order, but you can download any different type of weapon mod and add it here. Now we can move on to the weather category and make your game look beautiful with mods such as the Surreal Lighting mod, Enhanced Night Skyrim, and my favorite weather mod, the Mythical Ages Weather Overhaul. If you don't want any of the mods that I just said, you can have any different type of weather mod you have here. Just make sure it fits into this category and read the mod description beforehand because weather mods can be fragile if you combine them. Our next section features NPC changes, and I'm not talking about the way that the NPCs think, I'm talking about the way they look, so the visual way of NPCs. We'll move on to the coding and actual artificial intelligence of the NPCs later in the list. This section I would put mods such as the Beauty of Skyrim, Divine Skins and Body, the RS Children Overhaul, as well as mods such as Beards into the game, just to make your NPCs look amazing. We can follow that section up with the lighting and effects category, which features mods such as enhanced blood textures, dust effects, Skyrim is windy, and then of course my favorite, the enhanced light and effects mod. Any type of mod that alters the lighting or adds new special effects in the game, like animated clutter, or like I said, Skyrim is windy and dust effects, they would fit under this section here. After all your lighting mods are out of the way, we can move on to adding some creatures into our game. The mods that I have for this section, for example, would be the Real Wildlife mod and Temper's Mystical Dragon recolors, which pretty much just retextures all the dragons. Any type of new creature that you want to add into the game, like I know the Mihail Monsters and Animals mods are very popular, if you wanted to add anything along those lines that adds new creatures into the game, they would fit right under this section. Now we can move on to the Difficulty Enhancer section, which for my example, I have Elegy, the Difficulty and Balance Overhaul, as well as some add-ons and 
patches for it. I also have a combat overhaul, which is the Wildcat combat of Skyrim, and Violens, which is a kill move mod. And then of course I have the improved bandits mod, which improves all of the bandits in the game to make them more difficult. Just anything that makes the game more difficult or changes the difficulty balance or economy in the game, this is where the mods would fit. Our next section features the animations in the game, and it's also very important not to combine too many different animation mods together because if they do overlap it could cause some crashes, but the ones that I have for example here are the ones that I always use, which is the Dual Sun Animation Replacer, the one-handed version, as well as the Spoiler Animation Overhaul and the Refined Movement mod. Just any type of movement or dodge mechanic that you have, any animation that your character does, it'll go in this section here. Our next category features crafting mods such as IA92's Enchanting Without Restriction, mods such as the Smelt On Update and Craft Everything, just anything that alters the way that you craft or adds new crafting stations into the game, this is where the mods will go. After you're finished adding all of the crafting mods, we can move on to probably the biggest section of your list, which is going to be the retexture section. This is where I include mods such as Skyland All-in-One, El Sopa's HD Compilation, Lockpicking Interface Redone, as well as Grassfield, any type of landscape change or huge retexture mods that you have. I know Noble Skyrim is also a big one, and then there's also Tamriel Reloaded is also a huge retexture mod. Any big retexture mod will go in this category here. Your next section of mods is probably also going to be very large, and that's the expansion section. This is where you add new expansion mods into the game, whether it be the Great City of Solitude, White Run a City Full of Life, Breeze Home Basement, anything that expands upon the game that's already there or overhauls a certain area, that is the mod that you're going to want to put here. After you've finished adding all of your city overhauls and dungeon packs into the game, we can now move on to the map section of our load order, which features mods such as the pastel map markers and updated mine markers. You can also have other mods in here such as the vivid map markers, and I do believe there's like a quality world map mod that you could use. Any type of mod that alters your map will be placed in this section here. Now we can move on to the quest section of our load order, which in the template load order, I didn't add any new quests into the game, I just kind of altered previous ones and added some radiant quests, which features the missives mod in the Parthenax Dilemma. You can add any different type of quest mod that you want here, unless the quest mod itself in the mod page tells you to put it in a separate area. If it doesn't tell you where to put it in the load order, just sit it into this section here. After you've added all your favorite quest mods to your list, we can move on to the follower section, which for my list I have the Lydia Reborn and Inigo mods, but you can have any different type of follower you have placed here. After your favorite followers have been added, we can move on to the water section of our list, which only features one mod for my template, and that's the Realistic Water 2. You can have any type of water overhaul here, but try not to go overboard, especially don't have two different water mods combining together. That's not really a good idea. If it's two large overhauls for water, it's just going to cause crashes. I can almost guarantee that. So try to stick with one, and if you have any additions or like add-ons to the Realistic Water 2, such as like, I know Skyland has a water color that changes the color of it, that's fine. You can do mods like that, but don't do like two large overhauls for water because you're just going to have so many problems at that point. And at this part of the list going down, any section from here on out is going to be very fragile, so it's very important to pay attention to what mods you're adding from here on out. Because the next list features the alternate starts and bottom of the list mods, which sounds extremely vague again, but there's just so many mods, there's thousands and thousands of mods out there that it's so hard to be specific whenever it comes to the bottom of the list mods because there's so many mods out there that tell you to put it at the bottom but if every mod told you to put it at the bottom of the list there wouldn't really be a bottom of the list you know so the bottom of the list mods are mods that you want to pay attention to and make sure that you're sure that you want to put them in and you can just be careful all through there i also recommend following the template load order that i have here such as in this alternate start list we have the color patches remover as well as the alternate start live another life and then the add-on for alternate start which is the New Beginnings Live Another Life extension. These are mods that just make it so you don't have to go through the opening scene. You can just have an alternate start and choose what type of life you want to have in Skyrim instead of just being a prisoner that got caught. Now we can move on to the final section of our load order, which is the NPC AI, Final Patches, and FPS mods. I keep these all scrunched into one category because there isn't really many mods that come down here. I have mods such as the Run For Your Lives mod, which makes it so that the NPCs in the game will actually run away from dragons instead of just running in and attacking them. And then we have like better intimidations, realistic conversations, and relationship dialogue overhaul, which alter the way that NPCs talk and think. So that's very important to have at the bottom of your list. And then of course we have the FPS mod, which is FPS Eternal, or any other FPS mod that you'd want. But it's very important to not combine two 
two FPS mods together because then your game will either look incredibly different and delete too much stuff, or it'll just crash your game. Uh, FPS mods are very fragile because it deletes other things in the background that you don't normally see in order for the game to run faster on your console. So if you have a lot of those mods combined, it's just going to delete so much in your game that it's going to be very, very different and it could just crash your game. So it's very important to only have one FPS mod and the one that I recommend is called the FPS Eternal mod. So that should be it. You should have an entirely new load order whether you followed my template or not. You didn't actually have to follow all of the mods that I went through. This was more so an example example of the different sections that I separate my mods into and how I organize them. So if you didn't want to download any of the mods from my template, that's perfectly fine. But I would recommend that you remember these different categories that I listed. All 26 of these categories are very important when putting together a nice and successful load order. So I know this was a lot of info thrown at you at one time, and I do hope that it helped you guys out a lot, especially whenever it comes to making a load order of your own. I get so many different comments on all of my videos that say people just don't know how to do it, or, you know, it's very, very confusing which it is it's very difficult it's a very hard process to learn so hopefully this is a way for you guys to organize your mods better and structure them and maybe have a little bit of a better understanding of where mods will go and if you have any questions or problems with your load order please feel free to leave a comment and i'll try to help you out the best that i can so other than that hopefully you guys did enjoy today's load order tutorial video and if you did i'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you knew it really helps me out a lot and if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes or my future load order videos please be sure to let me know in the comment section below or you can follow me on twitter i'll be sure to leave my twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well special shout out to my patreon supporters thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me and yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you guys did enjoy and i will talk to you guys later